back, what do you think makes JPS Now Milton distinctive or special? I think that JPDS Now Milton is um, really focused on preparing children for the future. I actually really liked it here because there were so many fun things to do. Really helping me grow. The classes are really fun. My school is super fun. We all um, have like different ways of, of being Jewish, but we come together in one school, a like community. The only Jewish day school in DC, this is like a home. It's hard to imagine it from the temporary place that we were when I first came to the school, how permanent it feels right now. I think that the story of JPDS Milton is the story of courage. Courage that the founders had when they first envisioned this idea of a Jewish day school in the District of Columbia. How did you first get involved with the school? Well, I'm going to tell you how it started. My husband wanted his daughter to go to a Jewish day school. I did not want to put my daughter on a bus to go to Rockville. So someone said to us, so, so start a school. We had a four-year-old over at the Addis Israel Ghana Yola program, and we were looking to uh, have her go to a Jewish day school. So a number of us thought about starting a Jewish day school over at Addis Israel. And ultimately, that's how we got involved with the school. We had a number of meetings on the dining room table in our house. Well, we were determined to make this work. I am so proud that I was here at the very beginning, and I was with you know the first kindergarten class. And now my daughter is going to be in kindergarten next year. My son will be in third grade. Okay. And this is where JPDS, now Milton, used to be. So this is actually the first campus. You know how you've got the South Campus and the North Campus? This is the original. And there was just one classroom. All of JPDS was one classroom on the second floor of Ida's Israel Synagogue. What started as a dream of a few parents has become such an amazing reality. helped when we were constructing what was known as the cage, which was the play space at Addis Israel on their parking lot. It had gates that you could open to let cars park in it when it was needed, and gates that could be closed when the kids were in there. We did very well in the synagogue for many years until we really just needed more space. Um, the school really was, was bursting at the seams. It was clear that we wanted to be independent of Addis Israel, so it became clear we had to go elsewhere. We were without a home for the school. The culture that we created really forged a community that I think has served the school very well. So I'm very proud of that. The owner of the Owl's Nest was a friend of Ralph Dweck. He wanted to gift his house for tax reasons. We would be gifted the house if we could build a school on it. So we started that process. We were getting huge pushback from the neighborhood. And then we tried to buy a property in my neighborhood in Cleveland Park, where there were also lots of people who were opposed to a school. We came up with this plan to stay for three years in two synagogues. We went to the Board of Zoning Appeal and we had two sixth graders, like you guys, actually testify. And there was this big, scary hearing uh, where they decided that part of what they wanted to do with this hearing was have a couple of sixth graders uh, get up and testify. And somehow the producers of this video have found my testimony from that hearing which is incredible. Oh my God, you guys did your research. We didn't succeed, and it was a very emotional time for all of us. Luckily, a couple weeks after that, we were given an old public school in Montgomery County that was in very bad shape, and we had to raise a million dollars and renovate it within basically three weeks. 
My role in helping to create the school was to be a worker bee, and we had to clean that place up and we had to make it work, and it did. Boy, I had so many different roles. I was a gardener, I was a janitor, I was a parent. We started school actually in mid-September because it took extra time. And I remember that my middle daughter was in kindergarten at that point. And for the first few weeks, actually, her class met in a broom closet. So we are searching for a broom closet where I actually sent my daughter Eliana for kindergarten. Here's the broom. I'm not sure if this is the broom closet. I don't think I would have sent my kids, as much as I love JPDS, to, uh, to this literally this closet. So let's keep looking. Oh, this could be it. I think this is it. Many good times were had and lots of great learning and friendships that are still strong to this day as that kindergarten class is now 23 years old. So this is where we had the Forum Ball and we had decorated the entire space with gorgeous flowers and lights. Unlike the way it is now, and they do it at the press club, and they do it at here or there, we did it in the gymnasium at our school. And we did it ourselves. And everybody helped. You get your nourishment from what you do at the school, and everything else is just, you know, making a living. My contribution is bringing in a very large financial cash donation by Robert and Kay Shatner. They were close personal friends of my family's and I thought it was a good fit. It was a win-win. When we actually finally moved into what became our permanent home, the homecoming back to DC was very, very powerful and very emotional. We had spent three years out in Montgomery County. I should mention that we never had any problem with the children. The kids were just fine uh, during the different moves from one place to the other. But it was really hard on the parents. And then it was also hard on the faculty administration to sort of keep everything together. JPDS maintained a very, very high standard of excellence in terms of how it taught the kids, staff that it hired, the teachers stuck with the crazy parents who decided that we had to try and make sure that the school persevered and stayed whole. My favorite memory is getting ready for Art and Science Night and seeing everybody's work up on the wall. It made me realize how much the children learned and it was very exciting when the parents came in and the grandparents and they said, wow, look at this, look what our kids did. Now it seems obvious, of course we should have this campus, how could we ever have lived without it? But at the time, it was a very scary decision. It's 2012, and we are old enough to still be connected to the founding families, and yet young enough to be feeling that energy and vibrancy of the younger families coming up, and we have to find a way to bridge those communities and ensure the long-term success of the school. We always viewed it that it was beshared, that we were able to finally come here. It was a building that was in the family of the Himmelfarbs. Um, Stephen Film Himmelfarb was on the board at that time, and it all felt like it was meant to happen, and it did. You know, we always joked, nobody gets their kitchen done in 67 days, let alone renovates an entire school in that time, but that was what we had to do, and that was what we did. That was the culmination of an extraordinary amount of effort, both intellectually, you know, elbow grease, and just, just real hard work to make that, make that a reality. A dear friend and someone who admired JPDS a lot, Alfred Moses, invited me to lunch one day. He said, Ken, JPDS needs a middle school. What if I gave you a very sizable check to allow JPDS to form a middle school? And then, lo and behold, we now have the Milton Gottesman Jewish Day School of the nation's capital, and we've got the Moses Family Middle School. 
Milton Gottesman was a dear friend of mine, and I wanted to do something in his memory. We talked often about the Jewish world of the past, present, and future, and the school represents part of the future. So the thought occurred to me to build a middle school. I would do it together with Milton's family. It's April 2018. We are four months away from finishing the completion of the construction of the building. One of the great things about the new school, both the elementary school and the middle school, is we have much bigger windows now. Classrooms will be really bright and light. If you come this way, we're going to go look at the Beit Midrash. I think that having the Beit Midrash as the centerpiece of the new building is not only an architectural statement, but a philosophical statement. The Beit Midrash, the house of study, has always been the makerspace of the Jewish people. I love that the Milton, the old JPS, now Milton community, has this ability to dream big and then actually follow through. I think it's really a beginning of a new chapter for Milton and for the Milton community, and I think we're going to grow. I'm very excited to see what the eighth grade Milton graduates are going to be like, because I think that's going to be really a, a group that's going to be very impressive, that's going to have had an excellent experience and excellent training, and I think they're going to, going to go out and rock the world. We are part of DC. This school was founded on the dreams of a few very hardworking and visionary people, and my dreams for this school are that the middle school thrives, and produces kids who are prepared and stay a central part of the Jewish community of Washington, D.C. and set an example for schools all over the world. The days when the school itself was threatened really are way in the distant past. And so the struggle is remembered, but in a joyful way. Thanks you guys for doing this project. It's really great that you're doing it. And I'll tell you in 30 years.